Okay, welcome back to Sunday LA. We are at the uh, bottom of the hour right now. A local nonprofit group hopes to break the cycle of teen dating violence with a new state law report. The report rates states according to the laws they have aimed at helping teenage victims of domestic violence and comforting to know California does well, but uh, uh, some other states in the union don't necessarily do well. Um, joining us to talk about this is MC Sangela and Giselle Garcia of Break the Cycle. Ladies, thank you so much for coming in and joining us. Thank you for having and us. And MC, I'm, I'm gratified to know you are Bruin, so this is yes, balanced. Yes, so that's right. I'm, the I'm, uh, I'm reading some really uh, just um, awful numbers. One in three teenage uh, girls are victims of dating violence, and one in four uh, teenagers in general engage Correct. in just um, uh, electronic mean behavior, just sending nasty, mean, demeaning, abusive uh, messages online. You know, I, the first question I want to ask you is, it just, I mean, from, from when we were kids, it just seems like kids are meaner. Is that just me? Is that just a perception? Or, or is do you think that's the case? And why is that the case? Are, are kids being and teenagers being more nasty to each other? Um, we don't necessarily think, uh, Break the Cycle doesn't necessarily believe that uh, teens are becoming meaner. Um, I think the issue is more that we are just hearing more about it. You know, dating violence okay. is something that was not really talked about, um, you know, five, ten years back as much. And so now we're, it's really becoming an issue where people are learning about it. And it's a lot um, more open because of tax Exactly. And so uh, now we have this digital age where teens, it's like everybody has a cell phone, they have Facebook, they have all of these um, online social networking okay. accounts. And so it becomes much more prevalent in that sense. Okay, let's talk about the state law report card. Um, you had several states ranking high, like California, mm -hmm. with their laws protecting uh, teen, uh, victims of teen dating violence. Uh, explain that, uh, MC, if you can, and, and why California does well compared to other states. Okay. Yes, uh, Break the Cycle has uh, an annual report card since 2008 mm -hmm. rating all of the states, which is available on the website breakthecycle.org mm -hmm. if anyone's interested in, in reading each grade. Uh, the grading is right now based entirely on protective orders and the availability mm. and range of scope of protective orders that teens can get. And when you say protective orders, you mean like restraining orders? Yes. And are there other types as well? Um, or pretty much restraining orders? Restraining yes. orders. Oh, okay, so all right. Interchangeable uh, terms. And California does well compared to other states. <laughs> Why? Because the uh, breadth of the protective orders, uh, you can get a protective order for a range of behavior, including stalking, harassment, mm -hmm. um, things short of actual physical or emotional abuse, sort of the precursors, even property damage oh, as okay. well. Um, so for the breadth of the orders, that's, that, that's a good right. grade. And also the availability of them by minors and against minors. In right. some states, you cannot get a, a restraining order against a minor. And also that minors in other states cannot uh, get uh, restraining orders on their own without parents being involved right, or parental okay. consent. In California, um, teens as young as 12 can get protective orders, although there is still some discretion once the order is issued from the judge to advise the parents that this is in place. Right, okay, so uh, a young girl as young as 12 can get a restraining order, and it doesn't matter the age of the person or the other teen? That is correct, and that's one of the, the great things about the California Protection Order statutes. It's that it does not specify the age of the minor. Um, in other states, if at all, if they do, they will say 16. Um, by not specifying that, it could be someone as young as 12 as well, and so anyone really has access to these protection orders from that age. Um, um, it also covers same-sex couples. And the other thing that mm -hmm. makes protection orders important and what we look for particularly, number one, is whether they recognize dating violence to begin with. So mm -hmm. many states um, previously only focused on marriage relationships, but obviously we know that teens haven't, most of them have not reached that point, and so sure. that's very important. Um, and and can also dating violence be electronic, or does it have to be physical, actual physical violence, or can it be emotional uh, abuse? Abu uh, dating violence can be physical, it can be sexual, uh, verbal, emotional, digital. Um, the law specifically does it, it, it focuses on um, whether the abuse is um, it's a threat, actual attempts, um, or actual physical abuse, um, uh, uh, sexual okay. abuse, harassment. Um, Stalking, so it doesn't not cover that, but you know certainly there's door. And I understand some states go in the absolute opposite direction, and they prohibit uh, under 18 uh, victims from getting. 
uh, yeah, orders. right. That is correct. Um, I do not. Well, there are Fifty states, obviously, but there are certainly some states that do not allow minors. Um, I believe, actually, perhaps it's maybe once. It, one seven states um, do not allow minors to to access protection orders. And do we know the rationale behind that? Why that is? Um, no, not ex I mean, it's 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 hard to say. I mean, yeah. it's probably. Um, it, it could be something in a, in a slow moving direction. We have seen an increasing number of states that are recognized, that are allowing minors to protection orders and that are recognizing um, dating violence. It's just slower to catch up for the other states. Let's, let me ask you about uh, parental notification because that is always a big point of discussion uh, as it pertains to uh, sex education, as a possibly access to abortion and, and now teen uh, dating violence as well. Now, and I understand your point of view is that parental shouldn't have to necessarily, a teen victim shouldn't necessarily have to notify the parents. Uh, what, what is the argument behind that? Why? Well, there's, there could be different factors involved. Notifying a parent can actually make the situation worse for a teen. In certain situations, there could be households where dating is not even allowed, so the parents may not know that, that their child is dating, perhaps involved in a sexual relationship. And so by having that um, requirement to notify parents, it makes the teen less likely to go out and seek the help that they need, so seek that protection if they know that at some point the parent will have to be notified, and that is a problem. Uh, and I see how, I know, Judges have the discretion in terms of giving protective orders in California whether to notify parents or not. What have we seen from judges? Do they err toward notifying parents or not? Um, well, I think it's a case by case uh, okay. determination. Um, I also wanted to spend a little bit of time talking not just about the protective orders, but about the sort of the next wave in, in laws and policies, which was covered in, the, in the report card. but wasn't actually a basis for a grade this year, but will be next year, which has to do with education and prevention okay. in the schools. Um, that's really the next wave of policy making across the country. There are five states that require um, teen dating violence education mm -hmm. in the schools right now. There are 20 states with pending legislation, including California, to, um, to have dating violence education. And um, that's what, what would that entail? What, what kind of dating violence education might happen in schools then? Uh, well, we actually, Break the Cycle, has um, a DVD project called Ending yeah. Violence, which um, actually individuals can access yeah. as well, um, but it has a whole interactive curriculum uh, for teens to use and for, for teachers to use with students. Um, so the curriculum frequently comes from, from us, from experts. Okay. Like Break the Cycle. I can see some schools or maybe some educators thinking, gosh, they're so overwhelmed already, and now we have to pay attention to teens who are dating and what might happen in between them. Are, are they even equipped and do they have the resources to, to handle something so personal as this? Well, one of the things that we're at Break the Cycle we're looking for that we're constantly pushing through changes in policy laws um, and systems is to, um, by making these the, the dating violence prevention education mandated, it's that there is training provided along um, with that. So it's certainly not something that we want to add yet another burden for teachers because there is a lot of cover. But what makes sense is that a lot of the abuse is happening on schools. That's where mm -hmm. teens spend a lot of their time. And so it only makes sense to make this um, to cover this and so um, it's not just going into the, the, the classroom and talking about it but really addressing it there's all sorts of abuse and violence that, that happens uh, amongst teens and dating violence is one of the major ones and so it makes sense to us um, to provide that training and make it, make it mandated absolutely okay Giselle Garcia MC Sengala of Break the Cycle thank you so much and coming in and providing the important information good luck uh, on your work and hopefully we can bring those uh, numbers down. Absolutely. Right, Thank so you very much. much. Back in a moment, you're watching Sunday LA.